Hello Booktube! I am here today to review Crazy Brave by Joy Harjo. Uh, Joy Harjo is a poet, a uh, playwright, a uh, musician, singer, a uh, flautist, um, pa and a painter, um, and also possibly a dancer. Uh, but this is her memoir. Uh, it was published in 2012, and it tells the story of her early life up till about her early 20s when she d decided to become a poet. Uh, so, she was born in 1951 uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma to a Creek father and a half Cherokee, half uh, European mixed ancestry mother. Uh, her father leaves her mother when she's about five years old and her mom then marries a white man who is incredibly abusive. Joy Harjo actually describes him as evil and he should give you a lot of evidence to support that. He seems not only to dislike Joy and her siblings, but to actively want to make their life miserable. Uh, so that is the environment she grows up in for the mo majority of her childhood. Um, at 14, she uh, goes away to a boarding school, an Indian school for the arts in New Mexico, where she begins to study uh, painting. And so the story kind of goes from there. Uh, she joins a native rights activist group. She um, becomes a young mother. Uh, she marries one man and then divorces him. Um, she gets into an abusive relationship with a second man who turns out to be an alcoholic. Um, so, and near the end she seems to develop a panic disorder, so that there's a lot. And, um, you know, you, you have to marvel at Joy Harjo's storytelling ability, because so much happens in this book, I feel like. And yet it's only, it's so skinny, it's only 150 pages. Um, so there's a lot of different just kind of story tropes. There's the no good awful childhood that's typical in memoir. There's kind of teenage angst, romance drama at the Indian school. There's her abusive relationship with this man. There's her trying to raise her children. There's her ex experimenting with art. Um, you know, her experiments with drugs and alcohol. Uh, so there's just a lot in here. Um, and it's also, I think, a really more introspective memoir than others that I've read. There's a lot of just getting inside of Joy Harjo's head and talking about things more abstractly, her feelings and her experiences more abstractly almost. Um, the book is also kind of a mixture of different forms. Uh, she, she, several of her early poems are in here, and also there are a few passages that are partially fictionalized, actually. So, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, maybe kind of bending the boundary between memoir and fiction. Um, but, and, um, and then there are pro sort of prose poem-y parts, um, which aren't necessarily set off in any way, but, uh, set aside, like, they're, they're not indicated as prose poems in any way, but you can kind of read them and say that this is a bit more abstract, uh, so it's not necessarily, like, narrative here. Um, so, yeah, this is an interesting, complex book, um, you know, it's primarily the story of her journey to become a poet, and so it's kind of about the art and the power of art in this woman's life. I think poetry finally is a way for her to cope with the terrible things that happen in her life. Uh, and definitely, she meditates on art a lot in this book. Um, it seems to have kind of a religious aspect for her, kind of a, a way of gaining transcendence, of being closer to the world in some way or another. Um, and that's always really interesting to hear about. And she talks about kind of how that relates also to the culture of the Muscogee Nation, which is the nation she belongs to. Um, so, and it's also kind of... Um, as well as her personal journey, it's also sort of a social commentary. Um, it, it, you know, there's kind of little, um, tid tidbits we get here and there, like, for example, 
she talks about how when she's having a having a baby, um, she's looking over some papers she has to fill out at the hospital, and one of the uh, boxes to check is asking if she wants to be sterilized while they do the birth, and uh, she she of course she wants more children, so she doesn't check the box. But what she says is a lot of Indian women aren't fluent in, in in English, so they don't know what that box means. So they end up checking it off and unknowingly get sterilized. So, like, you have to think that white people could have foreseen that. So you have to think that that is some kind of intentional ethnic cleansing, um, which is insane. I mean, it wasn't even in the 1800s. I was in the 19... 70s so yeah and she also t there are other things like her mom d her mom doesn't like her second husband this white man who's so abusive but she doesn't feel like she can leave him because he's such a crazy person that she's afraid he'll like come after her and attack her if she leaves him and if she goes to the police she feels like they'll take the white man's word over hers um, so there's another example, and uh, Joy Harjo joins a native act, native rights activist group as well, and yeah. So and also there's just the backdrop of the fact that Joy Harjo was raised on this poor reservation where they wouldn't be if it hadn't been for the genocide committed against Native Americans. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, there's also some Joy Harjo seems to deal with a low self-esteem, which she doesn't say explicitly, but you can sort of see in her, the men she falls in with who don't seem to treat her very well, and also she talks about a half-hearted suicide attempt when she's very young. Um, and uh, again, I think it's art that helps her overcome that, and also her panic disorder. Panic disorder, for those of you who don't know, is like where someone periodically gets panic attacks, and a panic attack is where uh, your heart starts racing and you have this overwhelming sense of fear that something, some catastrophe is about to happen, and uh, it's really unpleasant. If A lot of people who have a panic attack think that they're having a heart attack, that's how intense it is. Um, so she develops that by the end, and she says in the afterward that poetry didn't you know, cure it right away, but it helped her cope with it, and it did eventually go away after many years. Um, so yeah, this is just a, a long exploration of art in this woman's life. There's also kind of the ways in which her life gets in the way of her dream of being an artist. You know, she becomes a young mother, and that makes it <clears throat> incredibly difficult to create anything for her to paint. And also, the men in her life tend to tell her not to create uh She's also, uh, Joy Harjo is also a feminist, um, so there's some of that too. Um, so, and in the end, it's just about her pulling through this and trying to create anyway. Um, so, this is beautifully written. Um, you can read it in a day. I read it in a day. It's only 150 pages. Um, but I, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I have. Thank you. Bye.